Gentlemen, we're back. Adam, Daniel, Ooh. hello. hello. Okay. Happy Wednesday evening. Yeah, it doesn't feel like a Wednesday, does it? it feels like a it feels like a Thursday. Yeah, it feels like tomorrow's Friday. So that's very yeah yeah. Oh, that's uh, been great. <laughs> next Thursday, eight days. I'm getting my braces off. Hey, that's good. Pretty excited about how many that. how many years has it been? I won't even ask months. I know it's years. I don't even years. remember. Yeah. I don't remember. Probably. Oh goodness gracious! Maybe t- just over two. Mm. Can I? Were you already in Pickering, Wait. or this was Orangeville already? I was in Pickering. Can okay. I? Can I ask? Because I've never met a person with braces who their timeline was actually ever on, ever correct. Was your t- is your timeline somewhat correct? Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Good for it you. Was a miracle. It, was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it is a miracle. I've had braces twice, and neither of them went. Like they were just many months later than they should have been on. Just like the uh, Philadelphia Flyers and their uh, retool, right? We will get to that because this is not <laughs> going to be something wild. Uh, I went to st- uh, went to school, elementary school and high school. She was a neighbor of mine. Her name was Alex. And she had braces. And I remember she came on the bus once. Because uh, where I went to school, we had to take the bus. Now everyone doesn't have that. But classic experience when you're younger, taking the bus to school. Wait, you used to go to a place somewhere else other than yeah. your house for school? Yeah, oh, I love half my class being asynchronized. It's great. Love to see it. Anyway. Um, and so, and she, she's like, I have more orthodontist. I'm like, oh, that's cool. You get your braces off tomorrow. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She come to school. Like she missed the day, obviously. And then, you know, Kim's back on like a Friday or whatever. It's like, ah, so give me a smile, Alex. And she's like, nah, I'm like, why? Well, she's like, he pushed it back a month. Next month comes around. <laughs> repeat next month. Oh, they're finally gone. <laughs> so that's, that's how it went. Anyway. Uh, oh, that's pain. We should talk about hockey. Shouldn't we? Let's do it. Mm-hmm. Except I don't want to talk about hockey to start. I want to talk about Stephen A. Smith. Yeah, man, let's do it. You're probably asking, Adam, why in the world are you mentioning Stephen A. Smith when I don't think I've ever really mentioned it before? So I've obviously seen clips of Stephen A. Smith, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, famously, the, the Lamar Odom. Who, would, you know, that classic one, Kwame Brown being a scrub. I've seen them. I've seen them. But as I've been getting into football this playoffs been fun fun sport to watch especially the last quarter maybe only the last quarter don't tell will die he'll get upset with me um i've been watching Stephen a smith ripping the cowboys and then from there the war of the basketball watching him cry about his new york knicks and i have been enamored by this man's presence i have not stopped watching steve it's infested my youtube recommendation <laughs> tab it's I I just I have such a thing when I, I watch the way Sportsnet do it with all due respect. And I compare it to Stephen A. Smith and it's completely different. Obviously, one is a you know first take as a show rather than a pregame, but I just the difference is hilarious. It's incredible the uh the poll I, I'm sure he has. Like just just in general, and he I don't think there's a day that goes by where he doesn't cause some type of outrage. Yeah, I'm surprised how much room <laughs> he's really given with the statements he's allowed to say or the takes he's allowed to give. Um before we move on, I just want to like one I remember there's only one uh fond memory I have of him. And it was during the Raptors finals um in 2019. Yeah. And I remember he he specifically um showed a video portion you know what it's like at the beginning of the second half so into the third quarter he showed a segment i think in the midway like the midsection of the scotia bank arena saying oh see raptors fans they don't care because look how empty it is here um like you know this is a finals game and then people are like you, you took a video of when people went to the washroom or went to go get concessions and he's like oh yeah see it's not a real basketball city or you know they don't care about the finals because they know Kawhi is gonna leave but yeah see look at that <laughs> <laughs> great about because I want to say he was in a foul mood around that time. He because was because the Knicks would have just gotten third overall, and obviously because I've I've seen in my clips watching he's talking to R.J. Barrett mm-hmm. and he's like, "Who's gonna win, Raptors or the the or uh, or Golden State?" And, and R.J.'s like, "I gotta go with my Raptor." Obviously, he's a Canadian boy, big story, and he's like, "I can't blame you there." But you know, inside he's like, "Oh damn, Knicks, I'm drop this kid." <laughs> <laughs> kid i love Stephen a smith like legit nothing but respect that guy is so entertaining i love rj barrett I'm jealous <laughs> i he's good isn't he he's pretty good he's, good he's good yeah yeah so, steve nash is his godfather 
Really? Yeah. yeah. That's cool. I like that. Mm. Okay, now we can talk about hockey, though. Sure. Okay. There Let's we are. Let's do it. <laughs> because we are talking about the Olympics because Team Canada has finally been announced. And my goodness gracious, do we have some names. First off, we've mentioned some of them before, but we're going to go through everything right here, right now. The goaltenders. I like to think that the three of us are pretty knowledgeable of the game of hockey, especially rosters and all that. There are several Sometimes. names I don't recognize. <laughs> I will remind, I have a tattoo of a former player's goalie mask on my leg. I that we have a hockey podcast. We've been doing 200 episodes. I like to think we know what we're talking about. I don't know these players. So goalies, Matt Tompkins. He was a Chicago prospect in 2012. Of course, Daniel does. Uh, Edward Pasquale. <laughs> he Pascal? was a, yeah, he was with the, he played on the the Jets like for didn't, briefly. Didn't the, last very long. Yeah, The uh, name sounds familiar. I, yeah. I will say. That. I think he gets to like an 80 in NHL 13. And there it is. In the right situation. Uh, Goaltender for the World Junior Canadian team last year, Devin Levi. Young prospect. You love to see it. The I really, one thing I'd like to say about Devin Levi, though, I know yeah. we, we're going to go quick with this one, but I'm really happy he makes this team. Um, after the World Juniors, he was out a whole season because of injuries. Was he? Yeah. And he's playing at Northeastern, right? Mm-hmm. Love to see it. Caden Primo used to play there. Uh, the defenseman, Brandon Gormley. That's a name you haven't heard for a while. Alex Grant. Uh, Tyler Wertherspoon, always a solid depth signing to uh, <laughs> uh, in NHL, the video games, especially if you're rebuilding. Uh, Matt Robinson. Mark Barbario, the Habs legend. Love to see it. <laughs> Jason Demers, Coyotes legend. Love to see it. Ma- um, Maxime Nero. Who mm-hmm. is that, Daniel? He used to be on the wild. Very good. Uh, breaking news, Aaron Dell has been suspended three games. Forgot oh, wow. to talk about that. Well, we will get to that later because that was not great. Uh, the forwards. Josh Hosang makes it. Well deserved. Best well, best. we'll see if he's healthy by then, but we'll see. Uh, Habs legend, Daniel Carr. Uh, Corbin Knight. He's um, <laughs> an NCAA guy. So <clears throat> he's to be on the Panthers and the Flames. Um, he actually played like I think 2016, but he's one of those guys that he played all four years and he was like a Hobie Baker finalist. He hasn't played in six years in the NHL. Is he related to Spencer? Right. No, I, I think he's Canadian. Oh, uh, oh he's ben, Canadian. What am I saying? He's oh, on the yeah, well, you know, team <laughs> uh, ben, ben Street. Do we know who Ben Street is? He used to be on the Flames. Didn't last very long. Jake McBain. Uh, Mike is crying about that. Uh, he better be the captain, Habs legend, Eric Stahl. Forgot about those Carolina days when he won the cup. No one cares. Uh, Adam Tamblini. I actually don't know who that is. And there that we name go. sounds familiar, but uh, couldn't tell you. Eric Odell. He used to be a Ducks prospect. Oh, my God. A lot of used to be's on this list. Uh, yeah. Daniel Winnick. That's guy. Uh, Leafs around. legend. That guy's Two-time that Leafs legend, legend, Daniel Winnick. Yeah, yeah. He's a guy that's always around, too. Uh, yeah. Landon Ferraro. It was really nice to see mm-hmm. how proud uh, Ray was. Uh, yes. So that was really nice to see. Um, Adam Cracknell. That was a name. Mason McTavish. Uh, hey. That's a really good young player. We're going to love to see that. Uh, David Dayarnay. <laughs> love it. And finally, Claude Julian loves having this right hand forward on the power play. The real deal. Jordan Wheel is a Canadian Olympian. I He's can't, back. I can't believe the day it's happened. I'm so proud. I remember when I first met you, Adam, and I said something about Jordan Wheel, and you're like, yeah, he just he's a great depth option that, you know, we have him on the right side there. Like, we just have to see what he can do. And he didn't do anything. He was great at Laval when he played, but, you know, he's uh, Jordan Wheel. Yeah, it's good to see you, buddy. Good to see you around. Can we talk about wow. the uh, reserves? Oh, yeah, goodness. Yeah, because yeah. there's yeah. one name in particular I think Daniel would like to, to talk about. Okay, Ladies and gentlemen, I, I think it for the good, first good. time since 2006. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold okay. up, hold up, hold up. The reserves, the yeah. forwards, Chris Domenico, I've heard of that. I think yeah. He used to be on the Leafs, yeah. In um, the sense, I think. Yeah. Max Verano. Yeah, he used to be on the Sens. Uh, and the, I think he played a year with the Leafs or in the AHL. Uh, another young guy, NCAA, Ked Johnson. I think he went fifth or sixth to Columbus. Uh, fifth, oh, yeah. Fifth, he good yeah. player. Uh, the defenseman, Morgan Ellis and John Gilmore. Yeah, those guys, heard of them. I uh, can't believe Gooley didn't make the team. And then that. And who's the reserve goalie for the Canadians? 
So I'll say I started again for yeah. the first time since 2006. He's back on the international stage, kind of. Justin Pogi, 35 year old Justin Pogi. All right, Daniel, uh, technical difficulties aside, it wouldn't be an episode without one. Justin Pogi, how do you feel? I'm excited. Um, he gets the recognition he deserves. I think we've given enough, given enough to him, you know. In reality and in the EA games, we've given Justin Pogue the attention he deserves, but I'm just happy to see him there. Um, I just like to say I love Bard Down, but man, the video they shared for him, that, that's not a good look. What did they do? I missed this. I didn't I know you um, sent it, but I didn't watch it. Okay, thanks. <laughs> um, he's gonna be, <laughs> if it, he, no, no, hold on, hold on. You're not gonna slander me like that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, not gonna not. No, 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 no. I mean you kind of threw you, you threw you kind of threw yourself <laughs> under the bus there. It's cool. Okay, it's a, it's a sh- no, no, no. Hold no. on. This is you just gonna- said okay, yes. No, 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 no. Here's how this is. Okay, first off, Daniel, you made another group chat so you could add the podcast as a user. I got Mike sending me six me. He'll send me a single post from one of those rumor sites, and the ones where it's like ten different pictures you slide through on Instagram. He'll send them individually though. Not instead of just saying, "Hey Adam, look through this." I get that. Oh, does you know, he do that? One of the rings meme page that you keep sending us. The school just keeps sending all these ridiculous emails. I, I'm sorry if I missed some stuff. My but apologies, I will not Adam. Have you no, you no, no, but you said you saw it and you didn't watch it. You threw yourself under the bus there. Because here's okay. This is my defense. This is my defense to this <laughs> slander, this judgment from my fellow co-hosts. I'm not judging you. I'm just. You know what's happening on Friday. I don't care. Yeah, Pokemon. Pokemon, no Pokemon. It's Poke. No, how dare you? <laughs> that's care. that's what the the the, the, the peep Pokemon. No, no, that's a disparaging way of saying it. Pokemon that's Legends. That's I'm going to keep saying it. No, no, no. Po- Pokemon Legends Arceus comes out on Friday. I'm so trying to get ahead of all my schoolwork, so I can until my class next Wednesday can do nothing from Friday the moment I'm done that class and just play Pokemon. I am busy. All right. Sorry, Adam, Go I didn't on, know though. about the backlog. What, what did you know what I'll do? I'll watch it right now. I'll watch okay. it right now if you want. Okay. Go, go, go on. You, you discuss it and I'll, I'll... But yeah, um, this is this is a time to celebrate Justin Pogi. Not to uh not to just focus on that video that he uh, barred down posted of him uh getting scored on and not liking it at all. So um it's a bit of a freak out there, but we still love him. We lo- we love that we acknowledge that he's still a world junior legend. So I'm just happy to see him back in the international stage. And that he's still playing, to be honest. I just like to clarify, Daniel keeps saying we and all these positive things about Justin Bogey. I'd just like to exclude myself from that we. I love how you're like, he's freaking out in the crease, but you didn't mention the part where he went after the guy and cross-checked him when the guy had his back turned to Justin Bogey. You know, we could nick and nitpick these types (laughs) of videos and... uh, you know, I mean, we, we see what we see, but we love the guy. What's the equivalent? Okay, I, I, I think I, I, I love the guy. I don't know about Alex at this point. I really thought that he'd support his former Leaf buddy. Listen, I'm, I'm worried because we have a quiz to do. And last time we did the quiz, I felt like Daniel conspired against me. And I'd now like- I feel like going into this quiz with this Justin Bogey situation, I feel like I'm going in one tied, one arm tied behind my back. I'm scared. I'd like, I'd like to acknowledge that I know that the quizzes have been very obscure in the past. But this one, I made it more manageable to add in more questions. So like don't worry. You added more questions? Added more questions, be more follow-up <laughs> questions, but like they're a bit... Follow-up? Yeah, there's a few follow-up <laughs> questions to the regular question. So okay. I was going to establish the rules, but I mentioned it last time where I made it three points per question. So it's three points for the main question, two points for the follow-up question. Wow, these are a lot of points you're handing How out. many? Okay, so let's say... You have a question, and beside your follow-ups, let's say the follow-ups are branches of the main question. Yeah. How many main questions are there? There are seven main questions. And each one has three? Uh, each one has, no, only a few of them. So one, two, three have follow-up questions. Okay. So there's about okay. ten questions. That's not bad. Yeah, so, not bad. Alex, you are the reigning defending quiz champion. Yeah, under certain know. circumstances, I will add. I couldn't find the belt. I have a be- WWE belt around somewhere. What I just do don't do? know where. I- just bring your uh, regular, like you know, everyday <laughs> just, belt. Just get a belt. Okay, I, it's upstairs. So, 
Daniel, do you want to explain the theme of the quiz and, and how we're going to do this? Then? Yeah, for sure. So for today's quiz, as if you're seeing the video, I have my uh, Team Canada stuff on my 2010 Martin Brodeur jersey and my 2016 World Cup, World Cup of Hockey hat. So today we're going to be talking about the Olympics. But don't worry, nothing too obscure. Like I looked through quite a few things and I it, here's a disclaimer. I wasn't able to find much on 2018. So okay. it's going to be a few past Olympics, but there's, I think right. there's two asterisks on two questions, but like I, I explain it. Okay. I love the Jersey. Got my Carey Price World Cup of Hockey Jersey. So you're saying there's no trick questions in regards to uh, selections and conditions, right? Yeah, there's no selection. There's no conditions. Well, there's Very only good. one, but I explain it. That's very nice. Okay. All right. Because okay, like I was, I was looking at records and then, you know, it's hard when you, one person's like a record holder from like the sixties or seventies. So that's one that was, that was the reason why I had to put like an asterisk on one of them. Okay. But yes. Okay. You ready? Is ready to go? Yeah. yeah Are we sending yeah. the questions via the chat? Yes. Okay. Go All ahead. right. You guys ready? Yeah. One, no, but yes. I'm, um, I'm, I'm ready. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. Question one for three points. Who is the all-time Olympic scoring leader? Um, oh, man. That's a good question. I'm going to uh, – listen, I think sometimes you just got to – you know, you can't overthink things. So I know. I'm gonna be, I know. I'm, okay. I'm worried about the timing, but you know what? That's okay. We're just going to okay. go with it. I have right. not done much research for this like I did last time. So oh, both of you that. guys said Wayne Gretzky, I assume. Yes, because Adam just put Wayne. It's not Wayne Simmons. Um, no, no, I, I would help that <laughs> Wayne was 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 suffice. Okay. Um, the, act- the, the answer is incorrect. Wayne Gretzky only played one Olympic. One Olympic, so that was 1998 in Nagano. Because he played the Canada member. There were no pros before yeah, 1998. They played Canada was, Cup. That's what I was worried about. Okay, fine. The Who? correct answer is Timo Solani. He has 43 points in 37 Olympic Games. Oh, sorry. This is just an overall. Okay. Yeah, overall. Okay, yeah. sorry. I'm thinking just Team Canada, but that's okay. That's, that's Oh, I did on, overall, yeah. That's because... on me. <laughs> not, <laughs> okay. not, that, not that it would change my answer by any means, but okay. Yeah, okay. Sorry. sorry about that. All right. You ready for the next question? Yeah. All right. So this is the asterisk one, by the way. So the most Olympic wins in the Olympics is Vladislav Tretriak with 16. However, he never played in the NHL. So who is the NHL goalie with the most Olympic wins? The hint is he has 12 wins, which is second all time technically. And he played in the 2014 Olympics. The 2014 Olympics, eh? It's Sochi. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's that guy. It can't be that guy. Was he a starter or was he around? Well, I mean, he, that's, gonna, that's, gonna, that's too much of a hint. That's so you just write your, write your question, your answer. Okay. Um, Ooh, I may have messed up. I don't think he was actually there. Okay, well, I've lost sorry. my face. I didn't think about that. I think he was a 2010. I don't think he was a 2014. I kind of, I, I messed the pooch there. For a second, I thought you were going to ask, who uh, who drafted Tretiak? Because I know the answer to that. <laughs> no, that's... <laughs> okay. I don't know if I'm right on this. Um, Montreal Canadiens. Yeah. <laughs> Both of you guys said Martin Brodeur. Yeah, he wasn't on. Um, was he, he wasn't was on the Olympic team. It was, um, the goalies for that year were Price, Luongo, and Smith. Please tell me it's not Roberto Luongo. The correct Can't answer be. for most career, second, I guess most for an NHL goalie is Henrik be- Lundqvist. Oh, yeah. I was going to say maybe Pekka Rinne, but Henrik Lundqvist, it, it makes a lot of sense. Shot, isn't he getting his jersey retired tonight? Yes, he is. I Congratulations, Henrik Lundqvist. I think he's on Jimmy Fallon, too. Yes, that's why that's I added awesome. him to the list. I asked, I added his question here today. So, yes, Henrik Lundqvist, 12 wins. It's Did- second all time. So I'm embarrassed. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Next question. Next question. Okay. Question three. What goalie has the best save percentage and goals against average all time in the Olympics? In the Olympics? Yes. All time? Mm-hmm. 
Is there a minimum for games played? No. Uh, well, like, because I just went on the general list. And I'm going to take a swing. I'm going to take okay. a swing. But... Okay. Um, Alex? I got to think about it. Give me a give me a second here. I gotta work through it because again, now I have to. It's not just Canada. I'm really screwing myself here. I'm just gonna try it again. Okay, let's get nuts. Again? Okay, yeah, again, same goalie. <laughs> Alex <laughs> said Martin Broder. <laughs> yeah, Adam is correct. It's Carey Price. His international numbers are his goals against average on an international level is lower than what he is yeah. stupid good. So for I have the numbers here. His goals against average is 0. 0.6 and his save percentage is 0. 0.972. Love you, Carrie. Get well soon, my friend. We're not friends. I wish we were friends, but get well soon. All right. So Adam is leading 3-0. Are you okay. leaving all the questions with follow up to the end? Uh, yeah, there's like two of them. Okay. All right. Here's your first follow up. Now that Alex oh, asked, yes. The well, the follow up after this, qu- the main question. Okay. Okay. All right. So Owen Power is the first first overall pick to play in the Olympics before making his NHL debut since who? Sorry, this player was a first overall pick. Yeah, but he never played. Like, so he made his. He's playing for the Olympics before he makes his NHL yeah, debut. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait. So wait, the the second play. This the player we're guessing is also first overall. Yes. Please ignore my answer, of Patrice Bergeron. Okay, I, that's <laughs> what I was gonna say too. And then he said first overall. A first overall pick uh, who went to the Olympics before making his NHL debut. Eh. Mm-hmm. Is it recent memory? Is there, is it, uh, let me ask you this. Is it this side of 2010? No, it's not. But I'm he played in, gonna, the, he played in the 2000s. I am so not going to get this right. Um, okay. I'll give I, you a hint. He, he's in the hall of fame. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. uh, wait, wait. Uh, uh, it's, it feels like it's on the tip of my tongue. Okay. I'll give you another hint. He played in Salt Lake city. That doesn't. That did not help okay. me at all. But that's. Fine. I'm just gonna say I don't know. Sorry. Okay. Definitely not that guy either. Adam? Um, I'm gonna guess it's. Um, it, he played in 2000. I'll give you a hint. We we have talked about him quite a bit on the podcast, and I made a oh. joke about buying his jersey. Just to just write write down the answer if you think it, you know the I'm I'm gonna say this guy, but I think I'm wrong because Salt Lake City was was that 2004? 2002. 2002. Yeah. Um. 2004 was the World Cup of Hockey. We're gonna make we're gonna make this joke here. We're gonna make this. I doubt it's this guy, but that's what I'm saying. I don't okay. Know. I don't know. I don't Alex, know. Sorry, you don't know? I, I don't know. All right. So Adam put Patrick Stefan. That is incorrect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The it's correct. Er- wait, it's not Eric Johnson, right? No. Okay, good. The <laughs> correct answer is Eric Lindros. Oh, 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 oh. So oh, when Eric Lindros oh, was oh. holding out for the Quebec Nordiques, he played for the Olympic team. That was gonna bug me. I don't know why I said Eric Johnson. He's still playing. Never mind me. Um, okay. Oh, that one's gonna bug me. The Eric Lindros one. All right. Okay. Okay. Here's the first follow up. Owen Power is also the youngest Canadian Olympic defenseman since who? I know they've mentioned this on the broadcast, and I can't. Mm. It, okay. S- read it one more time, please, Daniel. Okay. Owen Power. Yeah. Is also the youngest Canadian Olympic defenseman since who? The youngest Canadian defenseman since this person. And it's, re- oh, it's recent. Sorry? It's, it's recent. recent. It's re- wait, 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 wait. Team Canada solely at the Olympics, not just internationally. Yes, Team Canada at the Olympics. Oh, I'm good. This is going to be so wrong. I'm going to be so wrong. I have another guy I'm thinking of, but I think he's a little too old than what you're okay. asking for. Alex? Um, is this three points as well, by the way? This is two points. Two. I have an answer, but I know it's wrong, but it's just worth the guess. Okay. 
Both of you guys said PK Subban. Um, that's Again. incorrect. Yeah. Subban was 24. <laughs> yeah. When he was on yeah. Sochi. The correct I answer know. is Drew Doughty. He oh, made the, my God. Oh, he made the Olympic team in his second year as a 20 year old. Did he make it in 2010? Yeah. Shoot. Okay. He was 20 years old. For some reason, I was thinking maybe Jay Bomeister, but that's a little too long ago. Yeah, that's a little too long ago. I, okay. Ah, that one's, that one's, that one hurts. <laughs> okay. Okay. Next question. So Eric Stahl made the team this year. Correct. Yes. There, he joins two other players who are, who are both part of an Olympic team without the NHL and one with the NHL. Who are the other two? And wait, sorry, say that, say that again. <clears throat> so Eric Stahl made the Olympic team this year, yeah. right? Yeah. So he made it in 2010 and 2022. He is only one of three players to do this. Who are the other two? That they both played in an Olympic. So they played an Olympic, an Olympic wow. games that they without the NHL allowed to play and with the NHL allowed to play. Um, one hint. We have to remember 2016, don't we? Is that what you're saying? No, 2016 is the World Cup. 2018. We have to remember. 20, yeah, sorry, Pyeongchang. <clears throat> yeah. Um. Okay, I'll give you a hint for one of this because, um, I think I phrased this weirdly. So, yeah. if you can name one of them, it's three points. If you can name both, it's six points. But did they play in 2018? No. Oh. oh. Oh, now we got to go back. Okay. When was the last time they didn't go before that? It was, was 19, that been- it was, it was 1994, 1992. I but was the thing born is these, in 99. I know, but these guys are talked about a lot when it came to, because I, I, I took it from a broadcast where they talked about Owen Power and um, Owen Power and, uh, oh my gosh, what is it? Uh, Ken Johnson possibly being on the team. I may get the the range of this guy's playing career a little wrong, but I'm saying that guy. And I also misspelled. I couldn't tell you another guy, but I'm going to guess it's that guy. Oh, um, before you – sorry, answer, Adam. For this question, it's just Canadian players. Oh, thank God. Okay. okay. I yeah. tried to say Alex McGillney. Yes, don't worry. I'll, I'll admit that. Um, with and without the NA – oh, Daniel – I'm just going to pass. I, I have no idea. I'm going to throw a name in there. I don't think it's right because I don't know if the okay. playing wanna, career. You want to guess up. both? No, I just want to guess this one. <laughs> That's this one? Is it, that, is it him? Okay. So, Alex. So, Adam, just confirming you are going to pass. Yeah, that's a yes. Yes? Okay. He's muted. He's muted. Yeah, muted? Okay. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> Alex, you're correct with one. It was Eric Lindros. <gasps> no! He, I thought of saying him! No! <laughs> he was, no! So, I thought of it. I'm like, nah, he's not going to do it again. Oh, Adam, you're an idiot. You're a dumb idiot. No, you're not. You're not. So Lindros played in 1992 when he held out, and then he also played in Salt Lake City. And the other player is Paul Correa. So when he was in university, yeah, I was, uh, he played in 1994 and 2002. Yeah, that it's second one, I, I, I wouldn't have got Paul Correa. Okay. It's, so it's, Alex, it's three, that's three. three points. Yes, it's 3-3. Three, three. How many more questions are left? Uh, one, two, three more questions. Okay. Yes. All right. You guys ready for the next question? And they're all worth three points? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so... The triple gold club means you want a Stanley Cup, a World Cup, and an Olympic gold medal. Only one coach has this honor. Who is it? One has a World Cup, an Olympics, and a World Junior? Uh, World Championships, Stanley Cup, and Olympic gold medal. Oh. um, I can only think of... I don't know if this other guy would have ever played. So I'm guessing it's one of two people. And I'm just going to, are these, is this a, you know, no, I'm not even going to. Yeah. There's only one coach. Yeah. I'm Uh, thinking it's one or two people. So I'm going with this guy. Okay. I'm going to put my answer in. I don't, I'm not confident in it. Alex, we suck. I'm not confident in it at all. Yeah. We had a little bit. 
Uh, sorry, Dan. The spelling is all over the place on this one. That's okay. Okay. I, I don't Alex, think that's right. You put Joel Quenville. That is incorrect. The Before correct you keep going, okay. I was going to say Quenville, but I'm like, I don't think he's been a head coach of the Olympics yet. He's been an assistant. Assistant. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. The correct, I, answer that is, the correct answer is Mike Babcock and Adam, you got it. <sighs> I wasn't sure about the world championship one. Yeah, same. Be, be, like, because maybe? because you, what, his entire time in Detroit, they were pretty much making the playoffs. Mm, I believe he won the world championship when he was still the Ducks coach. Ah, uh, oh, okay, yeah, because he was a young man. All right, fair, let's go. Fair. Next how question. How many more left? How many more? Say how many more questions? I got to count two more. Two. One, two more. Yeah, two more questions. I'm scared. Okay, let's so this. this is going to be worth three, but it's also a follow up. So also. After winning the cup in 2019, this player is the most recent one to join the Triple Gold Club. Who is it? Say that one more time. 2019? Mm -hmm. And he's the most recent member? Yes. After winning the cup in 2019? Yes. Okay, first off, I have to remember who... Okay, so he's the most recent member... To join the triple gold. See, this is when it's a shame that I didn't pay attention to the world championships. Cause then I would know. Um, it's oh, goodness we're, gracious. We're talking about the blues, right? Yes. Yeah. They usually won. Okay. Yep, just, <laughs> who just in the world? Well, who would have, did they play for the blues in 2020? I mean, okay, that's going to be thrown out. Just, just write down. <laughs> Okay, Alex, have you sent your answer in? I have it, but it, I, okay. I think I have an idea. I, I have just, a single idea who it, I have so no idea if this I, guy's ever did. It's just the way Daniel answered the la- answered your question that I'm putting who, the who in the world would have left? Okay, so that means in the next year or recently, they would have won a world. Ch- I don't pay attention. Who the hell was on? It can't be this guy. Now, I don't who, think oh I'm right God. either. I don't think I'm yeah, right. But the, I way Daniel, in, but the way Daniel answered the question, I feel like I'm okay, right. Okay. Before you guys write, say these, just reminding you, he wasn't on you to win the triple gold club. You have to be on the Olympic team. So just you guys are okay with your answers. Oh, no, I'm uh, not. No, no, no. I'm not okay with that answer. I'm just, yeah, know. I'm dumb. I don't know how to listen. Okay. So, okay. So, no, 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 no. I know who it is. I know who it is. I know who it is. Okay. But you I, guys, I locked get, in my answer. I'll be, fr- uh, that, you uh, sure? Yeah. Yeah. I know who it is. I locked in my answer, though. I've, I've okay, also okay. now said it. Okay. You guys ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, Alex, you said Pat Maroon. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's incorrect. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what are you doing? Patrick Maroon <laughs> on the Olympics? You never know. Um, so Adam sent me two of them, but they're both incorrect. Okay. He said I, David Perron and Ryan O'Reilly. <laughs> it was it's, supposed it, to be per- it was supposed to be O'Reilly. Is it Jay Bomeister? Yes, the correct answer is Jay Bomeister. When I was thinking of saying him, when the hell did he win? When did he, what was the last? Oh, it was the cup. Wasn't it? Yeah, it was the cup. Yeah, no, that's fair. Okay, so there's now there's one more question left. Yes. Yeah. So Alex is has to get follow-up? this right to tie Adam because Adam is winning six three. Oh goodness! There's no follow up. There's no follow up. All or nothing. All or nothing. I mean, I'll come up with a bonus one if it gets tied. Sure. Yeah. All right, you guys ready? Yes. Yeah. Only one NHL player has played in four Olympic tournaments. He's Canadian, and who is it? One NHLer, a Canadian NHLer, has played in four Olympics. Yeah. So first off, that means the guy would have been around. Wow. Okay, four Olympics. Oh, that's a really good question. Hmm. Daniel, no hints. Um, oh, that's a very good question. That's a very good question, Daniel. How could you do that? Um, Is it I'm a just recent, gonna, recent? Oh, no hints. Sorry. Never mind. No, no, no. No hints. No hints. I'm just going to say that guy for the hell of it. I could be wrong, though, but I'm going for it. I'm going for it. I've locked my answer in. I don't know if the career timeline adds up, but... We're going to go with it anyways. I might be off. 
see if you see. Okay, so do my answer first, so we can build up the suspense. Okay. In case I'm wrong. To reiterate, it was a player that played in four Olympic games as an NHLer. Yeah. So oh, Adam as put, an NHLer. Okay. Yeah. Well, whatever. Adam put oh. Wayne Gretzky. That is incorrect because no, like, Wayne only played in one Olympic Games. Oh, you said that. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah I said that at the beginning of the, oh, God, the quiz. Yeah. Oh, I, my I, God. I, oh, I'm going to lo- I lost. I lost. And Alex okay. said Eric Stahl. I, I misunderstood. I thought I didn't realize he had to be in the NHL. But So Eric Stahl played in. Well, technically, he's going to be a second Olympic game. So, yeah. So the career can be in two. Yeah. yeah. No, the I'm, correct answer. You guys ready? Yeah. Is Chris Pronger. He played in 1998, 2002, 2006, and 2010. Silly me. Daniel, you know what to do. Finish it up. You know, yes. what, you know what you have to do now as the quiz master. So as quiz master <laughs> of our third quiz segment, Adam is back on top as champion, winning 6-3. Congrats, Adam. Do we should we clap? Who's so, taking the jersey off? One we second. should. Okay. We, we should really get our knowledge set. Six to oh, three. Hold on. There hold was like on, nine questions. Hold on. It's time for the winner circle, is it not? Sure. Yeah. I'd just like to say that when the rules are not set against me, they say the cream always rises to the crop, to top. If I should talk properly, and I'd like to, I'd like to dedicate this win. Uh, to Nathan McKinnon as an apology for f- failing to draft you um, in our fantasy draft. I'm sorry, Nathan. I feel good about this. Thank you to Daniel. Again, once again, putting it together, doing a great job. Alex, GG. Yeah. Geez. Good to see you. Uh, yeah, we do suck. <laughs> we need to get it together. I'd like to thank Carey Price and how many times I've looked at his international numbers. Couldn't have done it without UCP. Again, get well soon. Rest that knee. Love to see it. Um, and I'd, I'd like to give a shout out to Sammy Niku. This quiz was for you if you get claimed on waivers. I feel good. I feel good. All the right, first ever two time champ. I will. I, I don't need to go get my sword. I'm happy. I'm good. Today's episode is brought to you by Pair Networks. If you have a business, you need a website. What's the best way to get a website up and running? Choosing a website hosting service that makes it simple like Pair Networks. Pair has over 20 years of experience managing the entire digital ecosystem for thousands of online businesses all around the world. Pair makes it easy for you with do-it-yourself website building tools and features, including simple drag-and-drop page design and They have guaranteed U.S.-based support technicians ready to help you whenever you need it. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Right now, when you sign up with Pair Networks, you will receive one free month of web hosting. See for yourself how easy it is to build your website for free. Visit Pair.com slash free to get your first month of website hosting for free by using the code quick start that's pair p-a-i-r dot com slash free promo code quick start all one word to get started today gentlemen we're back adam we're still here we are we are still here um i'm in a good mood guys i am ready to go for the rest of the show here I don't know about you guys but it's it's a good time daniel great quiz as always i can't wait for the next one where i defend my title but we don't have great news to start the show, guys, because he was back. He was back and better than ever. Eric Carlson was on pace this year, guys. In an 82-game pace, 64 points. It's sad. Uh, he is getting some sort of forearm surgery, and he's out until mid-March. What's unfortunate is the Sharks were right in the middle of the playoffs. Normally, we don't sort of – so there are certain injuries we talk about, some we don't, but I just wanted to mention this because Eric Carlson, my man, I hope he's okay. Has it been such a good year? Yeah, you called it. You said he was back. Oh, Daniel. Oh, you did. You're going on about, about bar down and being so mean to them and me not watching the videos you said. No, I it's said, like, no, oh, I'm not. I'm, not I'm, saying, I'm saying it's unfortunate because you were right that uh, he was back. You know, he was back to the 
that um, elite defenseman pace that we know with, and love for Eric. Injury problems. Yeah, I thought he was gonna, like he was doing a pretty good job for for a while. Yeah, yeah it was. It's a, it's just so unfortunate. It, it's like their injury. locker room it's got better somehow. Yeah. It's unfortunate injuries. <laughs> it's unfortunate injuries keep crawling back with Eric Carlson. Obviously, we know in the past it's been with his uh, feet and ankles, and this time it's the forearm. It's just unfortunate because you're right. Like he was having a very good season, and San Jose is having a uh, better year than they did last year, which is easy to do when last year was not great for them. No, not at all. Um, really wish him the best though. Like I know that injuries, like especially when he's getting into his thirties, that they're not going to heal as quickly. And I don't, know, we still want to see that flash from him. I know that uh, it's going to take a while to go, but I hope like if the sharks make the playoffs, then he's still part of that. Yeah, they've got though. They're in the fight still, which you know for them is it's it's a big thing this season. But uh, I, it's just it's unfortunate. Yeah, again, it's like not even not even part of his leg, a forearm. Like you just you can't get you can't get like bad luck compared to Eric Carlson. Just a real shame. Um. So by the way, so Aaron Dow gets three games for that incident regarding Drake Batherson. First off, I didn't know Drake Batherson was having such a great year. Apparently, he was on pace for. Uh, something like 89 points or something. Quiet story over there in Ottawa, though. Um, but Aaron Dow gets three games for it. Uh, apparently, it's not the first time he's sort of made a, you know, I'm going to try and out my net, make contact uh, with an Ottawa center, not an Ottawa center player, but with players before. I think, I think he did it to Mark Stone. Mark, yeah. I don't know if Stone was a send, though, when it happened. but uh, I think he was a golden knight, if I saw the video correctly. So it's recent I, then. I was shocked what Aaron Dell did. I know Alex, so, you're disappointed because he's a he's technically a Leafs legend. Yeah, didn't he? Was he waved and was it was that the guy they lost to New Jersey? So they were yeah when they were oh, trying yes, to yes, have like yes. another third starter and then he showed off all of his equipment he got for the Leafs and he got claimed off waivers by New Jersey without even playing for Toronto. And they never played him in New Jersey. No. <laughs> No, I doubt that, that was kind of bush league. Like <laughs> you shouldn't like, come on. Like, I, I don't think he should be doing that. Like at all. I don't, obviously I'm the goalie guy here. Right. It isn't like I stand up for goalies at yeah. every turn. Uh, I would like goalies to not be afraid to get physical, but what Aaron Dell did was, you know, there are certain plays where you expect a goalie to do something and sort of what Dell did. Batherson wasn't expecting him to make that hit. Um, you know, there's a thing of you can't hit goalies, but at the same time, when something like that happens, you sort of have to have an exception to the rule. And I think it was the first time since Ray Emery, God rest his soul, by the way, um, that we've had a goalie suspension even in the league. So it's it's rare. There's such a weird player type goalies because it's not like it's not like the Sens could go after him because he's a goalie. You, you can't, you know, yeah. he's not going to be sent to the box for five minutes, right? I remember when it was like Carey Price, just was it Ben Lovejoy who he just pummeled after Petrie mm. pushed him into him? And he didn't obviously didn't go to the bench for it, but the Habs got a penalty. Um, there's such a weird uh, thing, goalies. I don't, uh, I think three games is fair because I don't think he has suspension history, obviously. Um, I saw our friend uh, Will Christoffel say it should have been more. Um, but then again, I don't think it's that much of a punishment to make someone play for the Buffalo Sabres. Not to mention, they don't have any goalies. <laughs> Where's Malcolm Zubin? I think he's he injured. Hurt? Is he injured? I oh, think, like, I even, like, I think, I think he's injured. Tokarski's injured. You were going to say COVID. Uka Pekalukanen. Craig uh, Anderson. Uka, Uka Pekalukanen is injured. Craig Anderson is injured. Oh my Hauser's goodness. playing, and like that's it. Because they brought Hauser back. They don't have a goalie. So they uh, they call up who's ever recent around some Buffalo university. Cause you're coming in kid. Uh, good luck to you. Cause you're playing for the Buffalo Sabres. <laughs> Get your reps in. Yeah, man. Uh, another sort of team that we can sort of look at here, you know, maybe not having the best year, but at least they have a good story. We're going to talk about Philadelphia and the sort of change in direction their team's going to have in a second here. But first uh, we want to give credit Keith Yandel. 365 consecutive games in the National Hockey League. Doug, uh, nah, not Doug. He breaks Doug Jarvis's record. Uh, Phil Kessel wasn't far behind him, but which is obviously a question of 
now our team's not going to be too hesitant to sit Keith Yandel in the future. We know there's a situation in Florida last year. But just you got to think of that, right? Over 900 NHL games, he might hit 1,000 straight games without getting hurt, um, close to getting sapped, but no. Um, what an accomplishment. Not points we talk about here, but my goodness, is this should be something really celebrated. I, it definitely should be because I think sometimes – uh, we forget that the guys in the NHL are beyond the top 1% of hockey players worldwide. They're like point what point one, like they're so gifted at what they do. So to be in a, th- in uh, an over 900 games straight is very much an accomplishment. And it's crazy to see, like we've seen the last few years, you know, we're, we're getting there with uh, Gretzky's goal record, but in terms of like games played record, we've had two or we're about to have a second one in terms of um, total games played. And now we're close to approaching two players breaking the consecutive games played record. Like just the, the, got the condition that these guys are in are at a, clearly at a whole different level. It's crazy to me that it, it actually kind of weird to me. It crept up. To me, that number, because for me, like Keith Yandel, he's always been there. He's always been kind of that offensive defenseman, and he's been bouncing around the league here and there. But I always forget like how many games he actually played consecutively. And uh, there was there was that fear last year when um, Joe Quenville almost benched him. So it's nice to see that the streak keeps on going. So here are some of the active or significant around active or guys who are like outside the league just recently, right? Uh, are obviously famously Carl Alsner was at six twenty two before Claude Julian benched him. Uh, Brent Burns active at six thirty nine. Jay Bomeister, who obviously we know retired that heart condition, uh, seven hundred thirty seven. Andrew Cogliano was at eight thirty before that suspension got him. Uh, Patrick Marlowe is listed as active at nine hundred and ten games played. Um, no, that's cheeky. Uh, Phil Kessel is at nine forty-one himself. So uh, yeah, we got some. We got some names in there, fellas. We got some names in there. Um, but isn't that interesting? Patrick Marlowe is still around. Speaking of uh, of the Flyers, though, I'm just gonna read some tweets that Elliot Friedman had here. Uh, just sort of uh, getting some of the quotes from the Philadelphia Flyers press conference today. I had Chuck Fletcher, the GM, and uh, uh, that, and also. Comcast, Spectre, Chairman and CEO, Dave Scott, who own the Flyers and have a very significant say, it looks like. Um, first off, they say that he doesn't see, or as in um, directly, Scott says he doesn't see the Flyers as a three, four, five-year rebuild. Uh, we're going to talk about Claude Giroux a little better, um, but Dave Scott says basically, Chuck's my guy. Um, we're going to give a blank check. We're going to get this right. I want it right now. And then Freeman makes a joke of every agent should start looking uh, for his phone number. Uh, It seems to be the flyers are not going to be afraid to make a big move. AKA if there's a free agent, that's going to make us better. I think the term for being thrown around is retool on the fly. So what that sort of means to me is you've just given Chuck Fletcher the keys to the castle to do to the flyers, what he did to the Minnesota wild. And if you want to know what that means, if you're a newer fan uh, in two years, not even the Minnesota wild are going to be bombarded with cap hell for the buyouts of Parise and Suter. That won't happen the same breath because contracts are different, but Chuck Fletcher is not someone I would say you can spend all my money to build this team. I will say uh, to add on to your point, you bring up the Minnesota wild, but let's also look at the work he did with the Philadelphia Flyers last off season, uh, specifically their defense where, you know, you looked at the team as a whole and you thought, where do they really need to improve was defense and finding Carter Hart, a decent backup goalie to replace Brian Elliott. I think Martin Jones has been okay, but I think that back end has not looked good at all and i think it's not making anyone's jobs easier that you gave up a first round pick which was 14th overall by the way for rasmus ristolainen i i agree with that where 
we when we mention retool, we always say that the ideal of that are the New York Rangers. But that's the thing. The Rangers were able to do that by signing guys, by not always giving up those top picks where, you know, you add in someone like Artemi Panarin, you, you convince him to come, you get Jacob Truba, you give up Ville Hanola, that draft pick for him. But at the same time, like you're not looking at the type of capital that you're going to give. And what you've mentioned before with Chuck Fletcher, I'm looking back on all of his trades right now for Minnesota. And then it's the same philosophy that you see that he's doing with the, with the flyers. Like for example, we talked about Ras- Rasmus Riskalainen in that first round pick. We have to remember that Chuck Fletcher is the guy that also traded a first round pick for the expiring contract of Martin Hansel, or he traded, he was the one that traded Brett Burns for Devin Setaguchi. Um, I think that these are just type of things that they have to see what, 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 what do you want in terms of management for that idea you want out of the team? Like what is the philosophy you want there? And I don't know if Chuck Fletcher is that guy. Um, even when it comes to draft picks too, like it's been pretty shaky with him as well. And he had enough years in Minnesota to figure it out. And I don't think it's going to be the same case with the Flyers. The Rangers, first of all, the Rangers weren't trying to reach. They were rebuilding. They were rebuilding. And they got lucky with the mm-hmm. draft lottery twice. Now, what helps and in favor of the Flyers making this choice is Neither Capo Cac or Alexi Lafreniere are major contributors as of right now. Um, but in the future, Lafreniere, there's still lots of talent on that kid. Caco is at least a trading asset. Um, but, you know, they signed, they used the market they played into bringing Artemi Pinar in Philly. I think you convinced someone to come in. They were bold getting Adam Fox. If any of us think Adam Fox would be this good, uh, I'm sure Mike would because he claims to know everything about hockey. Love you, Mike. Um, but a lot went right for the Rangers, and I don't think they expected that a few years into it, they'd have Chris Kreider leading the league in goals, considering he was so close to getting traded like two years ago. Uh, I I just don't quite understand what Philly are doing. Uh, Giroux, apparently the decision will be left to him, uh, and apparently over the All-Star break, him and Pat Brisson, his agent, will be sitting down and looking at the circumstances. Everyone's talking a lot about Colorado no, please, no, it's too good. That power play's nasty enough. Imagine you had Claude Giroux to PP2, then you can't do anything about it. That would be wicked good because he is, he does need a cup. He, he does. only got to what, six games in the finals, and then Patrick Kane happened, and boo. Yeah, the, the Flyers are in this really weird situation where you look at them and you're like, okay, what, what are they exactly? Um, like you said, and and I, I don't think unless, Daniel, you have the answer, I'm not entirely sure what this team is. And I don't know what this team is moving forward. Like they have good pieces there. Like I, I think Carter Hart is going to be an extremely good goalie if he not. He's already that. And we've seen it before. What on earth is Ivan Provorov? As soon as Matt Niskanen left, he kind of took a step back, like we said last episode. And up front, Travis Konechny's 24, Oscar Limbaugh's 25. Like the guys who, there's not a plethora of extremely young guys there yet. And if they don't want to rebuild, I don't know how many, like, what are they planning to do here? Like they just signed uh, Sean Couturier for another eight years, which was the right move in my eyes. But what are you going to surround him with? I think for me, the Flyers, I I never viewed them as a contender, but I think that they've already been given the two to three years to try to run with this core and see if they could, you know, try to make like a deep run. And I don't think it's there anymore that there's, there's really no, no reason for me to think that you bring guys back. I think that you make a statement trade like a Claude Giroux type of one right now to establish that it's going to be a different leadership group and you just try to figure out what you can do with those really, really big contracts. Cause the flyers are notorious, even no matter who the GM was for having these types of contracts. But if they want to do a real full scale retool here and there, like they have to know that you can't have these huge building blocks everywhere. 
So Buffalo have a game in hand. If Buffalo win that game in hand, uh, the Flyers are down to 28th. That'd be fifth overall. You get a good player in the draft or a good trading asset. Fair enough. You get something for Ristolainen. You could get something pretty good for Claude Giroux. Um, I'm sure there'd be a taker on Jane Ray Van's Reamsdijk, especially if you if you retain a bit. I don't think it would be a problem trying to trade him. Um, obviously, like we've talked about, like the big question, obviously, is you, know, you move Rasmus Ristolainen. You got some guys there. Uh, I'm not sure maybe even Keith Yando could get you something. Uh, Ivan Provorov's the big question for me. What do you decide to do there? Um, because... Of all the other defensemen there, Ellis is going to stay because obviously you can't trade him, and obviously you want to hold on to some guys. And he's, I think they confirmed he's basically out for the year. Um, but Provorov is the big question for me. What do you do with him? Uh, yeah. Because it just he hasn't been the Provorov we remember from three, four years ago. He's no, he has not been, and I, I'd be very curious to know what has changed with Ivan Provorov, like. I, it's. I think it's easy to say, well, it was Matt Niskanen, but like, you're telling me no one else is Matt Niskanen, and you weren't able to go out and get Matt Niskanen. Like, I wonder because he hasn't clearly hasn't had much time next to Ryan Ellis, and I just wonder if you give him proper time next to Ryan Ellis to see what happens. Like, I'd just be curious to see. Yeah, because. When I think of Ivan Proveryev, like when he was drafted, he was considered a solid two-way guy. Like I'm not saying he's a, you know, so far like a Tony D'Angelo type of player where he becomes a defensive liability. Well, that's what he was supposed to be labeled as. But as of right now, just it's it's weird to me that you take away a Matt Niskanen factor like that, and suddenly this guy collapses. Like, like I'm thinking of Eric Carlson. You know, you Mark Mathot got selected in the Vegas like by Vegas in the expansion draft, it didn't completely destroy Eric Carlson. No, no. no. Well, it, it didn't help that around the same time his ankle just died. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It doesn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't help at all. I mean, they're like, uh, they're going to sign Kadri probably. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they, like it's, that's such a flyers move. <laughs> yeah, of course it is. Uh, especially like they, if, if, or make this the club. Evgeny Malkin is his whole career. I'm going to talk about someone like Stephen A. Smith will hear. You look at Russell Westbrook's, Westbrook's teammates, and he's never won a cup, never won a chip, as he'd say. Evgeny Malkin, always behind Sidney Crosby. If he wants to put his legacy up there, he goes to who else but the Philadelphia Flyers? Carries them to the to a cup, their first cup, and I don't even know how long since the days of the Broad Street Bullies. I could see Philadelphia, no, despite Malkin's age, I could see Philadelphia doing a five year deal or something. Like just yeah. that's, they just something they would do. And they reunite him with Phil Kessel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, you know, it's it's that, or they're going to overpay for Nazem Kadri. Bookmark this now. They're they're gonna oh I haven't looked at <laughs> or maybe they're smart and no. overpay for Tom. You can't overpay <laughs> for this player, or they go get Thomas Hurdle in the offseason if he's yeah. not extended or signed and traded somewhere else. Well, or maybe you make a trade to you're the one who makes the trade to try and bring him in. Well, here's the thing, Adam. You said that they have to be smart. <laughs> so the Thomas Hurdle, we will rule out Thomas Hurdle because we <laughs> We know NHL eight general eight. managers. We know ge- NHL general managers. Not all of them are smart. Mm-hmm. You joke eight by eight, Daniel. I'd give her eight by eight. Yeah, I bet he gets nine. Something around there. Tyler mm-hmm. Sagan contract, maybe. If Hurdle gets eight or nine, what does that? What does Kadri get? Uh, same thing. It, their market is tied. Well, the the, the, the benchmark is obviously Zabanajad and Kachuri around eight point two five, right? Yeah, uh, maybe a little more because it's free agency and that. But the benchmark is going to be eight million dollars. That I can almost guarantee. You. All right, I just like to say a disclaimer. I love Nazim Kadri. Yeah, but I just feel like where he is in terms of his career, his age, the production he's had, comparative to the rest of his career, I could see this happening that he gets that eight-year deal, but then he goes back to like fifty points. 
Yeah, well, you, obviously, yeah, so this is his career, right? Um, we'll start at 12 13 season, 44 points in 48 games, 50 points, 39, 45, 61, 55, 44, 36, 52. This year, 52 and 37. Contract year, physical type of play, can get some suspension problems, and he's on the wrong side of 30. Of course, he's going to get overpaid, and someone's instantly going to regret it. It, oh, yeah. might, uh, it might be Jeff Skinner back. Ooh, not that ooh, bad. Wow. It's, wow. It's, it's, it could be like the, that. The, the thing with Nazem Kadri, and I, I, I've said it on the podcast before, is, and I, I've said this saying before, but I very much think it's true with Nazem Kadri. With, when he was on the Leafs, when he was on the second line, that was Nazem Kadri at his best. When when they brought in Tavares and Kadri got moved to the third line as more of like this weird shutdown line that like did it, you didn't really know what it was. It, that's when you know that you had that weird drop off from Kadri. But look at what he is in Colorado, where he's a second line center. Where oh no, you just had to face Nathan McKinnon, Gabriel Landeskog, and Miko Rantanen. Oh, here's Nazim Kadri. Like you're serving, you're you're putting him in the best possible situation to succeed. And I think that's what I mean. Most players need that, but I think with Nazim Kadri specifically, there's evidence in my eyes that prove that if you put that man in the right situation, you will have him succeed. If he's smart, he takes a haircut and he stays in Colorado. Because and obviously we know he's been on the he's been on a fantastic deal, deserves a raise, even if he isn't this hundred and hundred point, you know, trajectory guy. He's not. Um, it's just he's just who's the guy who's gonna think, well, in my top line, he can be this good. Is it Nashville? You never know. They try that a color, lot. They yeah, oh yeah, yes. every free agent center they sign. Every like single 16 one. million on Duchesne and uh, Johansson. And then see how much uh, Grandland is. Kyle Turris. Oh, Kyle yeah. Turris buyout, yes. Oh, yeah, that's a bad one. Stay on Colorado, though. Their current win streak at home is at 16 games. Wow. The record is 23 by the 2011-2012 uh, Detroit Red Wings. This is better than, geez, like I'm looking at this. These are some decent teams. If they win one more, they pass the 75-76 Bruins. Uh, 19, also a 70s Bruins. Philly from the 70s at 20. Boston again from 29, 30, and 20. And then, yeah, Detroit, 23. But, you know, there's a bit of an Achilles heel with the Colorado Avalanche. Do you guys know what it is? Defense? Injuries? I know Bowen Byron might be out for this. It's it's always injuries with Colorado. They're always up there. Uh, One specific, as you guys know, I watch a lot of Colorado Avalanche hockey. You wouldn't expect it because they have such a high-powered defense. They have the sixth worst penalty kill in the league. Vancouver's at the bottom, Arizona, Montreal, L.A., Phil, um, Winnipeg, and Colorado are up there. It's worse than Chicago and Buffalo. What's going on there? Wow. I was surprised. I thought you were going to say goaltending. Yeah. Uh, it, It hasn't cost them games, but they definitely need to upgrade. Definitely need to upgrade. Speaking of upgrading, it doesn't sound like it's going to happen. Friedman kind of said that Flurry wouldn't be, wouldn't want to do it because he's still a, a penguin. But he was messing around 31 thought, 32 thoughts, the blog, saying that uh, the Capitals were looking at bringing in Mark andre Flurry. I would never wish that upon a fan base, especially Pittsburgh, to see Mark andre Flurry as a Washington Capital. No. Thank you know what that reminds no. me of? But um, I know that the rivalry wasn't really there, but it just felt weird to me when uh, first it was Jose Theodore and then Chris. No, it was Christabel Huey and then Jose Theodore both ended up with the Washington Capitals. And it just looked weird to me. Uh, you, you don't like to see it, man. You don't like to see those those sort of those sort of changes. Because Huey still used the Habs pads when he was on the Capitals. I remember that. I mean, the red and whites in there still. Ignore the blue and we're fine. America colors, right? We're in the, mm-hmm. the capital. Yeah, you can do it. Talking about changes, though, still. New faces and new places. The Vancouver Canucks have been busy. They've made three hires. New GM, Patrick Alvin. Great. Good hire. Yeah, cool. Okay. You know, Tim McAuliffe GM loves and, him. Yeah. It does he? Why? Because they're both bald. They both um he he put the Tim and like oh like, I like this guy I don't know for some reason because they, he looks just like him. He looks just like him. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. White bald man. 
that's what they both look. They don't look alike. They're just both bald white men. I think it's also like saying Alex and I look alike because we're white with brown hair. I just got to grow out some facial hair and we're good. (laughs) Get my glasses on. Anyway, uh, so they they hire Patrick Alvin. I think his press conference happened, but I haven't had the time to look at it. Um, They bring in Rachel Dory to their analytics department. What a great hire. And they didn't just do that. They didn't leave it at that. To help with the CBA and cap, they bring in an assistant GM. It wasn't just any assistant GM either. It was Emily Castellan Gay. Sorry. I don't want to talk about it. We wish you the best, though. Yeah. This is actually a really sweet tweet about the whole thing. I'm very upset that she's not a Montreal Canadian employee right now, but uh, there's actually a very sweet story here. And this is a, a tweet I saw from Eric Angles. Emily Castonguay says that during the last conversation she had with her sister who passed away tragically 10 years ago, her sister said she'd one day manage the Canucks. She says Jim Rutherford calling felt serendipitous. Uh, that's just a really sweet story. I'm happy for Emily Castonguay. There's just, there's certain stuff in life that just sort of, lines up and that's just great for the family in general um and her birthday's in a few weeks apparently too so congratulations emily castell yeah i'm just yes. utterly heartbroken she's not a montreal canadians assistant gm fair fair <laughs> but it seems it seems like the uh vancouver canucks are moving in the right direction Rather than on the, and off the ice, yeah, yeah, on and off, yes, yes, on the ice too, off the ice as well. And I think for a fan base who has, uh, I'll say, has suffered uh, under Jim Benning the last few years, I, I think they 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 deserve this a little bit, like just some happiness. Like it has not been easy the last few years being a Vancouver Canucks fan, other than that run in the um, in the bubble. But you mean, look at last year where things kind of fell off the rails and then the team got hit with COVID and then they came back and it was just, it wasn't great. Um, And then to start things off this year, they were not great either. And from ownership down, it has been absolutely turmoil. So to see them making hires like this, I'm happy. Isn't this such a Jim Rutherford type of brand? Um, Good good moves to improve his team? Yeah, good moves, but also just kind of let me go for it. I know that uh, they were they were talking about how before they got Jim Rutherford, we're going to really assess the situation, see what we can do, and you know fill up the management team moving forward. And then Jim Rutherford comes in and he's like, "I'm going to solidify everything now." It, it was quite sorry. <laughs> it got so silent. <laughs> yeah, it got I'm so like, silent. There. Yeah, yeah. No, I was just going to say it, it's quite interesting because I'm dying inside from oh. the fact that the Canucks. Uh, I just, <laughs> I, I've ripped the Canucks so much, but I've defended them at every turn of the podcast, and that's how they yeah. repay me. <laughs> it, it was. I, I remember when Jim Rutherford uh, was hired by the Canucks. The sentiment around the Lee around Twitter was that it was just another guy just getting through the roll decks you know it's jim rutherford here he is and he's Ooh, made hockey man the 100 or was it 100 or 200 i always forget 100 uh, hockey men one of them maybe it's one of probably 100 the smaller the better for them uh but it, it seemed like maybe other than the patrick alvin one uh higher because i i think he did have him in pittsburgh the other ones have been quite um for hockey quite surprising good but i think we would agree it was quite surprising they went down that route you always kind of figure that someone was going to hire rachel dory for example but it just kind of been like oh the canucks made it it was the first sort of in the the rutherford era like the first good hire and you're like oh oh what's what's this about and i think off the top of my head it was like seattle were the only other teams from hiring women and it was like okay well and then the canucks are they're doing it, so uh, I'm happy for the for the Canucks. Uh, I like they got, to say, they got some good stuff. By the way, they're a ma- a re- rebuilding management, but a retool on the ice. <laughs> yeah, well, they That's should see they're in a good position to do that. JT yeah. Miller's going to get them something good. I can love to see that the, uh, the return for that because is it going to be as much as they paid for him? 
Remind well, me I, that was a cap dump for Tampa and they I, got a first. I, I assume you also got that from Mike. Uh, it was like a first in a, a, pro, a prospect, top prospect yeah, it was, yeah. which was pretty much what they got. Tampa Bay got for well, uh, well, they're not going to have to pay that the Rangers because they're going to give their first for Ben Chirot. That's what's going to happen. Sure. And you know what? You know who else is going to probably do that? And it's going to be a bidding war. Let me go read some thirty-two thoughts because I think me and Alex are about to. Who? Who is it? Is it Shaquille O'Neal? Who's like, or is it Charles Barkley? I'm here to open a dialogue. Uh, Alex, Daniel, you, you and I are going to sure. open a dialogue. Sure, go ahead. Let's open this dialogue. <laughs> Open thought 23. No, that is Joss Hole saying we meant that as a thought for later. Hold on a minute. I have messed up. I need to find the exact. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Hold on. I've, I I mislabeled my notes. Hold on. Give me a minute. It, it's number Give two. Give me a minute. It's number two. What, Adam, what are you doing? It's thought number okay. two. Thought number two. The last time Ben Chirot was a free agent, Toronto was very interested. It couldn't work at the time, but it's something to remember. Calgary, Florida, and St. Louis are among the other parties looking for him. Uh, so Alex Kellerman, I have a question Alex for you. Kellerman. Alex yeah. Kellerman. Yes, yes. What is the question? Do you want the Toronto Maple Leafs to win a playoff round? I do. Do you want them to win two playoff rounds? I'd like them to win four. You want them to win a Stanley Cup? Mm-hmm. Do you think Ben Chirot helps the Toronto Maple Leafs get that much closer to winning not one, two, three, but four playoff rounds? Um, I, I think it brings them closer. I don't think it brings them a first round pick closer to winning the Stanley Cup. Well, no, I, I have a follow up for that. Okay. By the way, Let's if the Leafs up. were to get Ben Chirot for a first and some change. Mm-hmm. Would Ben Sherratt be the defenseman of of either a Barclay Goudreau or a Blake Coleman type acquisition? Because we always talked about me, they weren't me, really I, worth I think it. It's David Savard is the example you're looking for more there. Because that's uh, you're thinking the comparison you're making is what people are saying about a trio like them. Okay. I think it's better a guy who ideally for a contender, third pairing nastiness. Can mm-hmm. I ask you a question about that though? Isn't it a shame that Ben Sherratt is going to go fetch more than Arturi Lekkinen. Cause in my eyes, that seems like, like insanity to me. When Frank Cervelli is like, people are begging Montreal that screams to me really how much do you want him? But we're not talking about Arturi Lekkinen right now. No, we're not. Or Vitaly Alex, I just wanted to bring that up. We'll talk about Lekkinen a lot later. Mm-hmm. Alex and Nimi, you want the Toronto Maple Leafs to win a Stanley cup. <laughs> Correct. They need to add toughness. A guy who ideally a bottom pair, if he has to step in the lineup, you want a Zach Bogosian type, don't you? You want a oh, bastard don't hurt him to like play that. against. You want a bastard well, to play against, you know, don't you? Uh, yeah. I can promise you after watching him play four playoff rounds and nearly three years in the Montreal Canadiens uniform, that Benjamin Sherratt, and I know what you're saying, you're thinking, Adam, not worth a first round pick. Alex, is your happiness as a fan? Is your love for your team? And they need to add toughness because right now, Lillard Green and Sandine is your third pair is not going to beat the Florida Panthers, who are, by the way, just killing everyone they play. It's hilarious. They're not beating the Tampa Bay Lightning. Luke Shen has something to say about Rasmus Ristolainen. Ristolainen, no, I say Ristolainen. Timothy Lillard is a first round pick. Really worth another meme of a summer? Hearing Steve Dangle cry about Mitch Marner for another half a year? Is a first round pick really <laughs> okay. that big I, of a deal? I will, I will a- let me answer your question. Uh, I, if you put Ben Sherratt on the third pairing of this team, I, I still, I, I don't think that does, I, I don't think that pushes them closer to beating the Florida Panthers or the Tampa Bay Lightning. Do you think when the Tampa Bay ad, Tampa Bay Lightning added David Savard to their third pairing, did that help them? Yeah, because look at the defense they already had. And David Savard is last year's David Savard is better than Ben Sherratt. I like I, I don't even know if that's like 
uh, debate. I, like, I, I'd uh, like to know where that David Savard is this year for the Habs. By I way, would also he is, like, he is very not much. Playing. I would also like to know, but in last year's David Savard is not this year's David Savard. Who's better, Timothy Lilligren or Ben Chirac? Like ben right Sh- now, right now, yes, Ben. Sh- I'm not, yes, Ben Sherratt. But what I'm saying is, I don't think by adding Ben Sherratt to this team, let's say you replace Timothy Lilligren with Ben Sherratt. So the third pairing is Ben Sherratt, Rasmus Sandin. Someone's playing on their wrong side. That's still not beating the Tampa Bay Lightning or Florida Panthers. Who is better, Justin Hall or Ben Sherratt? Ben Sherratt. Justin Hall has been atrocious, atrocious. This, year. this is this is what I say is Ben Chirot mm-hmm. is someone that is going to stir the pot. And I think if you're the Toronto Maple Leafs and you need to win the playoff round and you need to make a significant move, we know they don't need another forward. Unless well, I think they need another another centerman, but that's just me. Um, but if they're adding another defenseman, if you are a contender, first round picks don't mean a damn thing. And I think I thought the, the Leafs are contenders. Maple- I've been told for like the last 24 months, the Leafs aren't contenders. When did we throw I them mean, in that? I mean, category? let's be honest. They are like, let's just, it's just, it's just, if they're in another division, it's a much different story. But like, anyway, anyway, like, let's just be honest here. They may not be at the level of the Panthers and the Tampa. That's a fact they, they are. Uh, they're yeah. not Colorado or that, but no. I think adding Ben Chirot and that level of compete, a guy who's been to the cup final, a guy that you look in the face and you say, you beat us last year. We didn't like it. He'll bet that ire. Imagine this. Imagine this. You are down to nothing going into the third period of a hockey game. Mm-hmm. Game seven. Tampa mm-hmm. Bay Lightning first round. You make it 2-1. It was Austin Matthews. I, I don't know. Ben Trout wasn't on the ice. There's two minutes left in the game. And Ben Trout takes a hooking penalty. As he I always will, does. I will lose and Tampa my Bay get the insurance. Mind. Do you not care about this show and the content? No, I, I, if the Maple Leafs win the cup, I promise. If either of our teams win the cup, there will be more content on this show than ever before. I, I almost guarantee it. I, I almost the show. The two biggest teams the in Canada. Get ben I, I will. If it's for, for again, I'm not opposed to putting Ben Sherrod on this team. I've never been opposed to putting Ben Sherrod on this team, but the suggestion that Ben Sherrod for a first round pick pushes the Leafs past Tampa Bay or Florida is, is not true. I just, I don't think, I don't think that is true at all. I really don't <laughs> like, it's just, I, I can't see how adding Ben Sherrod to the third pairing does pushes this team, the team that I watch 82 times in a regular season or how many, whatever amount of games they played last year. not It's not going to push that team to the next round. What Here's happened what last do. year? Okay, what? Here's what it does. Jake Muslim will get hurt again because he always does. Because Correct. father time, you know, t- history repeats itself. And you have a guy who can fill into that role with Ben Sherrod instead of having to put one of their younger defensemen up there. That's what he provides. That's the value. It's not just the you're adding into the third pair, but you're adding a guy that can fit up and down the lineup. And we had seen in the playoffs can play in the top pair role. He can kill penalties. He is the type of defenseman that thrives in the playoffs. If you want someone cross checked in front of the net and getting away with it, because it's the playoffs, the bench around is the one for you. Adam, you know, who's going to clear Alex I, to Lord and Sam Bennett out the front of that. It's going to be Ben Sherratt. If you're telling me the Leafs have to trade for a first round pick, they have to trade a first round pick for Ben Sherratt, who would be playing in the fifth defensive spot. And if Jake Muzzin gets injured, he's the guy to go up in third. That is insane. The only listen, listen, the only reason that the Tampa Bay Lightning traded David for David Savard last year was because they could. If Tampa Bay did not trade for David Savard last year, I'm of the belief they still would have won the cup. That's how good that is. That is how good that team was last year. I don't think there's there last year. There was the, the first, second and third line. I have in recent memory. I don't think I've seen something as strong. I don't think I've seen something as strong. They did that because they could. They traded for David Savard because they knew they were going to make it that far into the playoffs. The Leafs, I have personally, I have no assurances that if you add Ben Sherrod, that they still get past the first round. 
So what would you do with the first Alex? Well, something this, like a different yeah. package or like this? a different player. How about this? Different player. Never enough penalty killers. You want someone who can score big, who has, who can score big goals in the playoffs, right? Yeah. Somebody yeah. who has scored to eliminate the Penguins in the play in round. Someone who scored the goal that sent his team to the Stanley Cup final. You want a cherry like him. And I will give him to you for a first round pick. Again, like I don't know. Like I just uh, again, like I don't. I know what this team needs, and it is very specific. It is someone who can play in the top four, who is rough, who is not named Ben Sherrod. They have to be of a certain skill level to play in the top four. Justin Hall is not a top four defenseman. Justin Hall is not a top four defenseman. I repeat that. Justin Hall is not top <laughs> four defenseman. This is what I'm hearing. I hear top four capable. I hear bastard to play against. And then, but the mention, the, the, the mention, I wonder, this is what I wonder about, honestly. I wonder if I hadn't complained about Ben Sherratt nonstop for the last two years. Excuse me. And, you know, complain about every flaw in this game. If your opinion would be different, but I've just no, no, done nothing not. but expose how much of a sham he is. You've like, proved, you've Winnipeg proved Ben Sherratt was like, hey, <laughs> no, legit, I think he would fit, but it's like, I, I just, you know, for a second, I think you do it. Who cares about a second round or if you're the least a first, maybe it's a stretch. I don't, I wouldn't do it, but it's just for some reason, this guy's value is a first. The, the Leafs, dumb. the Leafs traded a first and a f- two fourths for Nick Foligno last year. Yeah, it was a bad And one. that did not work out. I am in, and, and, and no offense to Ben Chirot, I do not want to see that happen. I do not want to see that happen. Again. If they, if they trade for Ben Chirot, I very much believe that that would not push them much farther along in winning a playoff round for this team. So, forget about trades. Let's talk about okay. signings. Sure. Joss Hosang's probably going to be a Leafs, a, a Maple, a Toronto Maple Leaf soon, right? After mm-hmm. the Olympics, probably. Because that guy's earned an NHL contract. He's earned a shot. I, I think so. If it's not with the Leafs, it's someone else. And I, I saw he talked about it uh, today. Um, that he would take up his uh, an NHL contract anywhere. But I, I do think, you know, if the Leafs do make a bigger move that includes a forward, whether that's depth or like Alex Kerfoot, I, it just, you have Josh Hosang there to put into the Maple Leafs lineup. Um, I was going to say, what are you guys expecting from the game tonight? It started. Sam Steele is but Anaheim up one yeah, nothing in the first period. I, I uh, so that will be uh, interesting. We should probably hurry up here because we are going on a little bit. It long is quite here. long, yes. Um, <laughs> wow. Uh, do, do, do Sammy Niku on waivers for the Habs. Kind of a shame. Poor guy. Hopefully he doesn't get claimed because Montreal gave him a chance. And yeah. Um, Pierre Lebrun on Insider Trading says, don't expect the Habs to make a coaching change in season. They're still paying Claude Julien and Mark Bergevin. They just signed Dutron to a three-year extension last summer. Plus, they'll be playing with no fans in the building for the foreseeable future, uh, at least for the rest of uh, rest of January. It's already been told the season ticket holders are not going to um, be able to go to the game. Uh, finances will play a role in this decision, uh, whether you want to admit it or not. Lebrun says he thinks they're going to wait to the end of the season before making a decision on Dutron. They won't guarantee it. Um, that's what I was saying. I, that that it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, this was all sparked after Montreal got pounded eight to two versus Minnesota. I stopped watching after the second period. Congratulations! <laughs> first you... NHL game from Michael McNiven <laughs> comes in for relief and gets shelled. <laughs> I was gonna say, did you see the video I sent? But you you saw the highlight already everywhere. The Kirill Kaprasov. We just went two circles around Montreal. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was great. It was a bad game. It was a bad game. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm not. I don't want to talk about it. It was bad. Uh, quickly to finish things off, Justin Falk uh, made a little bit of noise in Canada, didn't he, guys? He made a bit of noise in Canada. He, he made a little point. noise. Yeah. Uh, basically, on you know, like I can't wait to get out of Canada because all the restriction stuff. You know, fair enough. Uh, the Flames then shelled St. Louis seven to one, which was pretty funny. Uh, but it's a bigger discussion, and it's a real one. We've talked about. Canada, the restrictions, how our government kind of sucks when it comes to handling COVID and whatnot. Um, that Canada is not going to be a great destination for guys with trade protection or even free agents when we go towards um, free agency and the trade deadline. That, that's going to be an issue for 
there's seven. Remember, there's seven Canadian teams, and there's twenty. Well, I can't do the math. <laughs> 25. Yeah, 25 American <laughs> teams. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So it's Mark Giordano. I didn't want to say anything because I a, didn't know either. It's, a long, it's been a long day. So Mark Giordano is not coming back to the West Coast no, so. of Canada. He's already on the West Coast. Um, unless he wants to. Yeah. Like, clearly, there's, uh, there's, a, there's a sentiment of not wanting to deal with these. Uh, restrictions. Like I'm just trying to think. There was probably a couple more in the summer, but I know Zach Bogosian. One of the reasons, other than the fact that he got three years in Tampa Bay, uh, left was because he the restrictions were crazy, like just a little ridiculous at some point. May I say though that Flames tweet afterwards? Yeah, that like everyone in the comments section like that has united all of the Canadian teams against Justin Falk. It might have. It reason, might have. I, do blues fans like it? You think they're like you're the reason we don't have Petrangelo? Oh, <laughs> that is true. Wait, so that it would be true. him or Tori Krug? Like, who do they like less? Probably Justin uh, Falk. Oh, Justin yeah, Falk. Yeah, because Falk isn't Tori Krug is a better version of Justin Falk. Remember the when Justin Falk got traded to St. Louis. I'm pretty sure most of us were quite sure that Alex Petrangelo was not going back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just want to finish off. We'll talk about uh, some shenanigans to do with also from Thirty Two Thoughts. Number six, uh, Jacob Chikorin stuff. It's grind time for Jake Chikorin. There are several teams going hard at this. Florida is there for sure, but I'm not convinced they want to move Antoine Lundell. Yeah, don't. I think Columbus is there. Anaheim, Boston, and Carolina <laughs> have been there. I suspect Colorado's in self mode, no doubt. Uh, there are others. My sense is L.A. and the Rangers are out for now. Weird stuff happens. You never know. But we're past the fact um, fact finding stage, and we'll see when it closes. Um, Alex, I think the big thing here is you're confused. Uh, you want to ask ask the question? Ask the question. So maybe you guys can answer this for me because I I've been, I I thought about it last night when Friedman dropped the blog. Why would Columbus trade? high assets for Jacob Chikorin, considering they're pretty much in a rebuild. I before. can see it this way, just one way. Yeah. And it's control because okay. they, they always are that type of team that they want to buy the years for these players before they hit um, they the, the UFA years. Yeah. Or if they leave or anything. So Jacob Chikorin represents control and a young asset for them. So and, you know, he's a pretty competitive guy. So I think for them, it's kind of like the Oakland Athletics. <laughs> it's like Billy Bean, where it's just like you kind of get these guys that they're not going to they're not going to hurt you with the cap. But, you know, that there's so much team control on them. I'm going to check where they are in the standings, because I want to get an idea of where their first round pick is going to be here or where they project to go. Because Columbus, they have this troublesome little habit of never being as bad as you think they are. Um, because, you know, they're Columbus. They just have that me Columbus thing about them. And hot so take. They're... Sorry, go on. No, go ahead. Well, I have a hot take where I'm like, they. I don't, I think Cole Sillinger has played beyond what they thought he was going to be, initially at least, that maybe Kent Johnson goes to Arizona. So here's where they are. They're in a weird place where if they win their games in hand, they're kind of meddling in the middle of the league. Right now they draft 10th, but there are games in hand problems there. Um, and Columbus is going to be a team that's going to be played spoiler against some of the more competitive ones at the end of the year. So if you have a pick that's going to end up in the middle of the round, here's the question. Is that pick going to be as good or the player you give up in the trade as good as Jacob Chickering? Here's what bothers me about the Jacob and stuff. When I hear fans of teams saying, I don't want to listen, not giving up a first for Ben Schrock, I understand that. Here's the question when you're acquiring a player. Are the assets you're giving up, are any of them going to be as good as the player you're acquiring? If it's a top five pick, no, no, you ain't giving it up for Jacob Tricker. If it ends up being 15th overall, and uh, I don't know, yeah, if you're not touching Ken Johnson, you're not touching Sillinger, um, I mean, maybe you give up Chinnikov in the first. I know they really like him. He's a good player. But uh, you know what I mean is, 
here's what happens at the end of the day. You get one of the most talented offensive left-handed defensemen in the league. Um, and as long as you can hold on to some of those marquee young players, it doesn't matter because none of those pieces are going to be as good as Jacob Chickeret. Like if you're the the like the Panthers, I get not wanting to give up Lundell. Mm-hmm. But at some point, here's what happens. This is where the NHL, I, this is what I love about the ML, not the ML, MLB and like NBA, is they're going to go nuts and we're going to make this giant trade and all this type of stuff. I respect the fact that they are trying to go and get a good player sure. is what I'll say to that is what I would think their headspace is. And I kind of respect it. Yeah. Yeah. No, no doubt about it. I'm just, I, I wonder where Yarmo Kekalainen sees his team it is what I'd be more curious about. Cause he's uh, like, no, I don't, you don't really hear much out of Columbus, like ever. Is it a weird balance? <laughs> But at, like the way I was looking at it is if you're get the clearly Arizona wants a first, a young player, a former first round pick and a, a, pro, a top prospect. Like that's a lot to give up. If you're the Columbus Blue Jackets, like they're not there's 13 points out of a playoff spot. Uh, they can keep dropping because the teams behind them, like the rate, the Islanders have plenty of games in hand like it's just it what might happen why would you consider giving up your first round pick this year is what i would ask i think if the lottery wasn't what it was because i think it's so this year i'm pretty sure the top teams it's at the, is it the top three picks for the only ones their lottery and they can only go down two spots i think i wonder if it's the old formula yeah can you just double check that please if it's the old formula you don't take the chance um, and maybe you make it top five protected in that case. Again, what I would rebound to is just, is that player going to be as good as um, as Chickering? Not to mention, it sounds like a lot of people are saying next year's draft is the big one. Um, and this one is... Now, I, I don't know about you guys, but when I hear like this draft is going to be good, I kind of say whatever. Uh, they're magic beans. <laughs> I, 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 it's kind of like, oh, this team had a great draft. And it's like two of them may make two players. It's like, okay, good. Uh, I don't think about 2010. Maybe, hmm? So there was like, hi- like 2003 wasn't as hyped, but it ended up being hyped. And then 2010 was considered hyped, but it was okay. And then 2015 yeah. was the accurate one. It's, listen, I'm sh- I don't, if, a classic example, man, Braden Point third round, and he's one of the best players of this generation. So, okay, cool. Uh, Stuff like that, right? Yeah, it's just um, it's it's just stuff like that. Not to mention, don't forget the Columbus Blue Jackets. They just had a really strong draft. What was it? Two or three picks in the first round, and that they had three. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm sure they can afford to. But it's it is kind of jarring when you're like L.A., New York, Columbus. Yeah. Yes, uh, pardon me. I mean, he's done it before, right? Like, I know that it was different, a different situation. But remember when it's like, where's Matt Duchesne going? Columbus. And then yeah, they're in Columbus. there a lot. If you, yeah. if you really think back, they're always in it, but they never often do it. I'm assuming you found it, Alex. Yeah, so I have it here. Oh my god. The NHL draft lottery will be reduced from three drawings to two as part of changes announced on Tuesday. Uh two other changes will be good. Uh teams will be restricted from moving up more than 10 spots if it wins one of the lottery lottery draws, and teams cannot win the lottery more than twice in a five-year period. Uh, any wins before 2022 do, do not count. Wait a minute. Say that 10, 10, 10 spot thing again? Teams will be restricted from moving up more than 10 spots if it wins one of the lottery draws. Does that mean 15th can only go to five? Yeah. I'm confused. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So then 11 can still get what? Hypothetically, yeah. Mm-hmm. If I understand this correctly, I so no one As someone currently rooting for a team in last place and who is going to the draft. Hell no, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm my standard for the Habs is a top three pick this year. No, so no, the, no. So that so the because it's two drawing. There's only two draws. That's for first and second. So what it says here is. Uh, 
it ensures that the team that finishes last in the NHL would pick no lower than third. Okay, so I had that right. Okay, okay, that's that's not bad. That's not bad. We can take I, those. Can I say that this has gone full circle since we started the podcast? Because when Stephen A. Smith talked about the Knicks having the worst record but getting third overall. Yeah, no, I I've watched the clip of that and him talking about it so much. I it's hilarious. I like to say ESPN no disrespect can... though, by the way. No disrespect. J, RJ Barrett is becoming an amazing player. I know that everybody wanted Zion Williamson or Ja Morant that year, but Zion Williamson hasn't played all year. Ja Morant, I know he's ge- he's becoming a generational talent, but RJ Barrett is up there. I know nothing about basketball or I know little about basketball. What you're the ja, ja Morant. Yeah. He's the guy. Okay, that's a guy. RJ Barrett's he's getting up there because Z Zion's obviously going to end up in New York yeah. once he's done with just, the Pelicans, just like KD and Kyrie. Yeah, <laughs> that's another thing. That team might implode after this year. By the way, I know. Well, right? because Kyrie I, is awful. So I saw not, Kyrie's not showing up, and Harden's now no. He wants to test for agency. It's not that Kyrie doesn't sh- isn't showing up. He can't show up because of his vaccination status. It's it's horrible. And yeah, Harden's like, I don't like the pressure because he was supposed to be the third guy in. And then it's just, I'm learning you know, basketball. You know what they need? I think that team needs Russell Westbrook. So they can oh. they can bring back the, the trio from the <laughs> OKC days. See, I, I know my basketball hey. sometimes, sometimes. And with that, we will end the show. Thank you for watching. Score updates. It's one nothing San Jose. Uh, one nothing Anaheim. Ovechkin, hopefully he can get on the board today. Seven goals from Yager. Love to see it. Do you guys know who's leading the league in goals? Yeah, Chris Kreider. <laughs> you said it earlier. Ah, oh, hurts, hurts, hurts. It hurts. He doesn't deserve it. They should have won in 2014. Thank you for listening to the show, if you watched it. Um, this is Adam, the defending quiz champion, signing off for the team, as always. Uh, well, they're still in the Zoom call. I don't know why I did that. It made something like transition. As I lean back in my chair for Daniel's favorite part of the show, check out the TikTok and all the other social media stuff for both us as individuals and the show. It's in this link in the description below. If you want to watch this podcast but see our beautiful faces on the YouTube version, go check it out. Uh, voice ad. Did I already say that, didn't I? Voice ad, great platform. Thank you as always. Check us out on Spotify too, because we're there or iTunes. I mean, Apple Podcasts. Stop ruining the app, please, Apple. Uh, leave a five star review because there's one person who left a two star review like a year ago, and we hate them. Uh, if you're listening, you suck. Um, if you leave a five star thinking we like you, um, leave a review. Maybe we'll read it on the show. Um, probably not because we always forget to look at it, but I promise you, you we will. Um, what else am I forgetting, guys? Uh, my YouTube channel, That's Daniel Stuff for CGRU, Alex's blog. And his podcast with Nick Baldwin, that was pretty cool. Uh, movies should not be longer than three hours. Um, anything else? We love you guys. We do.